As a cereal grain, rice is the most widely consumed staple food for a large part of Belize's population. By and large, we eat as much as 12,000 tons of rice each year. That's a total of 24 million pounds prepared for dinner plates across the country. Over the years, local producers have been working tirelessly to ensure self-sufficiency in rice and, for the most part, they have been fairly successful. So, when the idea of introducing grain from Guyana was initially proposed in March 2015, the suggestion was very much frowned upon by industry stakeholders as well as government. There are ongoing meetings between the Ministry of Agriculture and the local rice producers. I will only say at this point that we believe that the situation can be managed in such a way as to bring the price of rice, locally produced rice, down for the consumer in such a manner as would make it unnecessary for them uh, to want to consume instead the imported rice. But, but it's, it's, it's a work in progress, the situation is still fluid. And that's how it would seemingly remain for the better part of nine months, until businessman Jitendra Chawla revisited the notion in early December. Only this time, the proprietor of Extra House was prepared to put his money where his mouth is. Through another company, RC Imports, Jack Charles, as he's better known, proceeded to bring in three containers of prepackaged Guyanese rice. His determination to introduce cheaper rice into the local market triggered a back and forth between farmers and government officials, past and present, about the issue of food security. The supply of rice and access to it became the issue at hand. Enter former agriculture CEO and regional trade specialist Sergio Garcia. I've heard the, the CEO and other senior officials speaking about food security, and even the Mennonites and the, and the other millers speaking about food security. But they have the wrong concept of what is the problem in Belize. Food security is in Belize, there is no lack of availability of supply. There is. The problem is access. The problem is that the average Belizean consumer cannot afford the price of rice. Okay? And what that tells you, we are saying that we can bring rice that is more affordable to the consumers and ensure their food security. Sure enough, Jack Charles made good his promise. On the morning of December 17th, a consignment of three shipping containers, each carrying 50,000 pounds of rice, arrived at the port in Big Creek. That delivery had made its way from Guyana to Belize via Guatemala. Prior to its coming, however, the Belize Agroproductive Sector Group, a consortium of individual growers from across the industry, weighed in on the legitimacy of the cargo in the absence of an import permit. The case here is that even though rice may have come from Guyana in the past, uh, each time that rice hits uh, Belize or comes to Belize, it has to have a valid Baja permit for that specific shipment and our understanding is that that Baja permit for this specific shipment has not been granted. That nugget would essentially form the basis of government's argument in a subsequent proceeding. Back at Big Creek on the afternoon of December 17th, Jack Charles has made the journey south to retrieve his freight. At the local Baja office, however, he is met with news that the payload would not be surrendered to him. Based on instructions from my supervisor, right? how I explained to the importer. Um, we are detaining the, the, the cargo, the shipment of rice, and if further information you need, you could contact my supervisor. As you can see, I had already processed my custom entry to get my goods to be released, and after the customs, we need to come uh, to get clearance from the Baja. And yes, as you guys know, we don't have the permit, but we had already applied for it. SPS permit. SPS, um, uh, well, the Baja SPS requirements, no? But we had already applied in July, right? And uh, we are here, we brought all the documents, all the certificates needed, basically. Uh, those are the same kind of certificates they had used for the last year importation of rice from Guyana. With the shipment impounded, Jack Charles would later initiate legal proceedings in an effort to challenge Baha's decision to confiscate the containers. On Christmas Eve, representatives of all parties, including the Mennonite communities of Blue Creek, Shipyard, and Spanish Lookout, appeared in Supreme Court. 
An application had been filed to grant leave for judicial review. This while the batch of grain accrued storage costs in Big Creek. Despite their confidence that government would end up absorbing that expense, Justice Sonia Young set aside the application. Again, not having secured an import permit prior to receiving the cargo proved fatal. What happened is that the court held that because there was no import permit, and that was so important that because the importer did not have that import permit, then what he did was unlawful, and she would not grant leave to apply for judicial review. He pretty much saying that you needed the import permit, and without that, you cannot import the goods into Belize. From a regional perspective, the saga involving Jack Charles and the importation of rice has a lot to do with the CARICOM single market and economy framework. Under the revised Treaty of Chaguaramas, which establishes the CSME, member states are allowed to trade goods and services across the Caribbean. While that may be so, regulations are also in place to protect markets in lesser developed countries such as Belize from being infiltrated by more developed countries like Guyana. Reporting for News 5, I am Isanike Atano.